Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Knowledge Era. In this video, I will explain you all the memory areas present inside this JVM architecture. So basically, there are five types of memory areas: method area, heap area, stack area, PC register, and native method stack. So I will explain each memory area one by one. So first, start with the method area. So friends, this method area is mainly responsible for storing all the dot class files present in present inside our java application that is whenever we compile our java application we will get the dot class file and this dot class file will be stored inside this method area along with this whatever the static variables inside our java application will be stored inside this method area one more important point regarding this method area is that there is only one method area inside the entire jvm architecture so whenever we deal with the multi threading then multiple threads can access the data stored inside this method area simultaneously that is thread t1 thread t2 up to thread tn can access the data which is stored inside this method area simultaneously therefore the data which is stored inside this method area is not thread safe in short method area is responsible for storing all the dot class files along with the static variables and the data which is stored inside this method area is not thread safe that's it for the method area now the next memory area is the heap area heap area is mainly responsible for storing all the objects arrays and strings inside our java application that's why heap area is many very 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 important for programmer's point of view now java people has given us three methods max memory total memory and free memory in order to access this heap area consider a example of a hall consider an example of a hall which can occupy up to 100 chairs but initially we have only kept 20 chairs in that hall and amongst that 20 chairs only 10 chairs are occupied with the students and 10 chairs are unoccupied. Now in this example, max memory is 100. That is the hall can occupy up to 100 chairs, but we have only kept 20 chairs. Now total memory that is initial memory in this case is 20. That is initially we have only kept 20 chairs in that hall. And free memory is in this example is, not, is 10 because only 10 chairs are unoccupied and 10 chairs are occupied with the students. Now I will explain you all these methods which is accessing the heap area with the help of one program. So inside this uh, Eclipse there is one project with heap demo. I will create one class with uh, heap and friends there is one a runtime class with the help of which we can access these three methods so I will create the object of that runtime class and inside these methods these three in by calling this get runtime static method we can use that three methods so I will first print the max memory allocated for JVM so max memory for heap so object dot max memory similarly I will print the total memory allocated for heap the last free memory allocated for the heap now we will I will run this program in 
thus we you can see these results and all these results are in terms of bytes so for better understanding what I will do I will convert these bytes into MB so for that I will create one variable and I will multiply 1024 into 1024 and I will divide this MB whatever the bytes result I will uh, I, I get I will divide that byte result with with the MB variable after running this program you can see that all these results are in terms of MB so max memory for heap for my machine is 2016 MB and initially only 126 MB is allocated for heap area and right now I am and free memory for heap is 125 MB and right now I am only using 1 MB of heap area so we can also uh, we can also get the consumed memory that is how much memory right now we are using for heap area by subtracting this free memory from the total memory so I will show you how we can do that so I will first accept this total memory and I will also create one variable for free memory now I will just subtract this free memory fm variable from tm variable so that we will get the consumed memory of heap consume memory of heap so I will just subtract this fm variable from tm variable and I will divide this with mb variable so that we will get the results in terms of mb I will what I will do I will just format that text format that output yes then yes you can see that only one MB is right now I am using for heap area just in the in this way we can in this way we can get get to know about this heap area that how much memory is allocated for heap how much how, how much memory I am right now consuming so with the help of these three methods we can get this information so that's that was the heap area now I will talk about the stack area so friends stack area is mainly responsible for storing local methods and local variables inside this stack area consider this example for better understanding there is one class test and inside this main method I am calling m1 method m1 method is calling m2 method and inside this m2 I am just printing this hello text now after running this class test internally one thread will be created and one runtime stack will be created and what I said that just by running this class test one internally thread will be created and this runtime stack will be created inside this stack area and after creation of the, this thread it will first load all the methods inside this runtime stack which is executing so first that thread will come to main method because execution of the java begins with the main method so it will first load this main method inside this runtime stack then it will control will come to m1 and, and, and thus it will load this m1 method inside this runtime stack then control will come to this m2 then m2 will be loaded into this runtime stack now inside the m2 we, we we are just printing this text so it will not load anything inside this runtime stack so our runtime stack will look like this what our thread will first load this main method then now then it will load first then it will load the m1 method then it will load the m2 method now after loading or we can say after pushing these methods inside this runtime stack it will first execute this m2 method so after printing this hello text m2 will m2 will be erased from our runtime stack similarly m1 is also not doing anything after calling the m2 so m1 also erased from our runtime stack main is also not doing anything after calling m1 so main will be erased from the runtime stack now 
our program is executed completely and runtime stack is also empty so what jvm will do jvm will erase this runtime stack from the from the memory from the stack area in order to free the in order to free the memory now again whatever the details which we were storing inside this runtime stack each entry inside this runtime stack which we were pushing is called a stack frame that is main and m1 or m2 which were which we were pushing inside this runtime stack is called a stack frame or activation record and this stack frame is divided into three parts local variable array operand stack and frame data that is inside this inside this entry it is this entry is divided into three parts or three slots local variable array operand stack and frame data now i will show you with the help of this example what details are saved inside this each slot so just focus on this program that this main method is calling m1 method so inside this m1 method there is a there are four local variables which you can see this a b c and s all these local variables will be saved inside this local variable array and you can see that it the c variable is performing some calculation a plus b into 20 plus 30 by 2 all this calculation will be calculated inside this operand stack and whatever the constant or literals which you can see that is this s variable is holding some abc text it will it will come into this frame data slot so what i said just now that whatever the local variable that is c s a b will be will come into this local variable array calculation will be performed inside this middle middle slot and whatever the literals or constants are there are come into this frame data frame data part now one more detail regarding this stack area is that whenever we whenever we execute the program in case of multi threading a runtime stack is allocated for each thread creation now in previously i explained just one program that was the sequential execution that's why only one thread is created and after creation of that thread runtime stack is also created so if we operating on multi threading concept then for each thread runtime stack will be created and if the thread t1 is accessing that runtime stack then this thread t1 will is not able to access the other runtime stack similarly if thread t2 is accessing this runtime stack then this thread t2 cannot access the other runtime stack that's why my point is that whatever the data which we store inside this stack area is thread safe that was my point so that was the stack area now the next memory area is the pc register so friends pc register is nothing but the current current instruction execution is maintained by this pc register this pc register holds the address of the current instruction which is executing right now and after the execution of this instruction currently instantly the address is incremented and this pc register points to the next instruction this was the only use of this pc register that and the next method next memory area is the native method stack so friends uh, there are some scenarios when in in our java application that uh, there are some methods which are implemented in other programming language so consider a case uh, of your java application where you have written all codes in all code in java programming language but there is some method inside that method there is some code which is written in some other language let's suppose in php language in order to perform some database related activity so this this method which is working on php method so this native method stack will work on that method so operation is same like uh, stack area it will load that native method inside this runtime stack and will execute this method which is stored inside this native method stack so that was all memory areas for you in this video so in the summarized form i can say that these three method areas that is method area heap area and stack area 
are very important for programmers point of view and pc register and native method stack are internally are are not so important regarding the programmers point of view so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to our channel in the next video i will explain the execution engine of the jvm architecture thanks for watching this video